Number 135 in the imprint range is A Night to Remember from 1958, directed by Roy Ward Baker, the man who did uh, Quatermass and The Pit and my favourite amicus uh, movie, Asylum, as well as Vault of Horror and some other movies as well, <laughs> which are quite noticeable. Um, notable. We have this wonderful take on the Titanic. Now, of course, Bearing in mind that it is a factual uh, movie, it does have rather a lot of uh, artistic flourishes that really seem to have been almost copied by Cameron and Titanic as well. And this is a, a kind of docudrama take on the sinking of this ship. She's going to sink, Captain. But she can't sink. She's unsinkable. And it feels uh, very informative in the way that it goes about showing us through the eyes of the character, the second officer, uh, Charles Lightoller, who um, kind of watches in disbelief as the unsinkable ship sinks. And we follow lots of various characters on here as they seemingly just don't realise the gravitas of the situation that they're in. Eileen! Yes? won't get back on board tomorrow without a pass. <laughs> and throughout the whole movie, watching all, as we, the viewer, knows ultimately what is going to happen, there is a sense of frustration, there is a sense of anxiety that drives up throughout the viewer, or it did in my case, watching these people unwilling to take heed of what is actually happening. And from the technical standpoint, seeing um, the, the a list of various areas that just compounded the situation, all which could have been somewhat avoided at some point. It just creates a really anxiety-driven movie because we're watching these people and we know the result of what's going to happen to a large majority of them. But it's done in, in such a intimate way, I would say, that it really allows you into the movie uh, and make you feel, like I said, anxious, worried, hopeful that they may actually change history and somehow manage to fix the issues that go along here. Um, there is a great use of miniatures on this one as well, which I think are done wonderfully. There are a couple of sequences where they don't quite fit in when they try to use miniature people but it doesn't detract from the great storyline. Watching these characters um, as they niggle and fight and berate and even moan about small inconsistencies that have nothing to do with the grander picture. Watching one woman as she continually just puts off her place in the boat um, because you'll get the next one. She'll get the next one or something else will happen. To watch the men trying to find a way uh, onto the boat when it's women and children first. Uh, very familiar. No one away. Uh, like I said, there's there's lots of little touches between this one and Cameron's Titanic that you can't help that he's lifted a lot from this movie. Of course it's factual and it's based on a real story but just lots of little moments um, have made their way into both the, the kind of movies and it's just nice to see how the two different filmmakers tackle these kind of elements where you've got the more sentimentality take from Cameron with the love story and the Romeo and Juliet aspect of, of Titanic uh, whereas here you've got, like I said, a docudrama kind of take on it where we're more just watching these people seeing them go about their life um, little simple moments that they have there's no lavish stories here just watching these people being uh, kind of dumbfounded by the slow gradual realization of what is happening here look oh look which I think is, is one of the more um, magical aspects of the movie, how it does that. It's, it's one where, as a viewer, most people know the story. We know what we're going into, we know what we're going to get when we go to a Titanic movie. 
but the way it kind of eases you in um, to that sense of dread and, and lack of urgency that's going along here is just wonderful. And the way it flits around various characters are, are pretty traumatic, um, knowing that you just want to give them a shake and tell them what's going to happen. Um, but that's great filmmaking, the way it does that. Uh, the way it slowly throws the Titanic uh, sinking is pretty fantastic. Uh, the skewed angles as the ship starts to tilt and people still trying to go about their business. The odd person starting to panic and realising um, the kind of situation that they're in. I like to remember, uh, it's always one of those movies that gets under my skin, that deeply uh, kind of crawls under there uh, and, and starts to infect me because I always forget how good it is. You know, you think of the Titanic movie, a boat's going to sink. But the way that the constructed uh, tale here, uh, the people who are on the boat, the different personalities, the situations that arise, and that slow creeping dread really, really affects me watching this one. I love A Night to Remember, and I think this disc uh, is looking fantastic. There's a great transfer on here. Particularly, I do like uh, the interview with Kim Newman that's on this one. Um, I think there's a lot of good extras on here that make it worth picking up. It's a movie that's had several Blu-ray releases all over the world, but this has got uh, several new uh, featurettes and additions to it that I think does make it worthwhile in picking up, even if you've seen the movie before. I think it's a disc that's got some good extras that need to be seen. I would love to know your thoughts on A Night to Remember. Let me know in the comment box below your thoughts on this and uh, even Titanic, if you've uh, Cameron one as well, if you want to drop your opinion about that, that'd be great as well. Another movie that I really enjoy. There's more content up here if you want to see more of my stuff as well. Don't forget to hit the like button and in the description box there is a link to Patreon and the membership program if you really want to support my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Man V Films.